having all of that, all of that data available, how how do we bring it to to the end user? So, yeah. So I'll start. Um, so I think that the the secret there is actually the cloud, right? Because um, everybody has use cases for AI, and everybody is using AI. The the problem has always been that it is a significant amount of resources. Uh, not just in terms of compute space and rack space, but also environmental impact to build and train and house your own models, right? So the availability of cloud and the acceptance of the use of cloud, especially in heavily regulated businesses like finance and healthcare, has allowed access to those services where previously really wasn't possible. Uh, it's also done it on a much different cost basis. It's much less expensive now. You can put down a credit card and for a couple hundred dollars a month, you can get a cloud instance. And for a little bit more, you can get access to a, a semi-private uh, you know, machine learning model. So, so I think that's made it accessible to, to the masses. The other thing that is really important, especially when we talk about usage of, of front-end applications with these cloud services is we're, we're really back to a mainframe model, right? So. If you think about mainframe, it was a heavy compute resource in a central facility with, at the time, coaxial cables running to thin terminals. And we're right back to that. After about 20 or 30 years of everybody being about building the biggest, best desktop computer you could make, we're back to a mainframe model, except now we call it cloud. But that has allowed us to create these very powerful applications and provide them to lots of different types of users on lots of different types of devices, regardless of what those devices are. Um, so that's that's the first thing. The second thing I'll mention, and this is really more of a, of a transformer foundation model AI innovation, is that the interface to these systems is now natural language. You don't need to be an expert in Python or coding to ask a, an AI system to do something for you. And that is tremendous. Because one of the things I hear a lot when I do these types of talks, and I also do some community AI training and, and classes, is I'm going to be out of a job. You know, I don't know Python. I can't code. I'm never going to be able to work with this. And then when we sit people down and actually play with AI and they realize it's as easy as speaking to another human being, they realize that the knowledge they have from the decades of work that they've done becomes more valuable in the new models with the new applications because they have experience that younger coders may not have. So they're working on the back end, the coders are working on the back end, and you've got the highly skilled knowledge people in the different industries working on the front end, and that becomes a bridge between the two of them. So that's, that's what we're seeing from a trend perspective. I think we're missing an important middle layer here. Um, and so, and I, I, you know, as I said in my introduction, you know, I'm a capital markets practitioner by training, right? Not a technologist. So I show up at Microsoft four years ago, you know, and, and I figure cloud is infrastructure, much, much like you described. But what's interesting is cloud is actually a, a series of Lego blocks. And when I started at Microsoft four years ago, I think we had something like 70 different Azure services. And so think of each Azure service as a Lego block. And you know, I'm I'm old enough to to have played with Lego as a kid when there were probably about 20 different types of Lego, and that was it, right? And then I you know I bought Lego for my kids, and Lego we have this you know a bazillion different types of Lego pieces, and so when you have different types of Lego pieces, you could do way cooler stuff, right? Versus just having you know the eight dot blocks and the four dot blocks and the two dot blocks. And so that's what's happening with cloud. We've gone from having like 80 Azure services when I joined four years ago to today, I think we have over 300. So think of those as new types of Legos. And what's, what this means to business stakeholders is that they can innovate much more quickly. This is part of the reason that we're seeing so much more innovate. The, the pace of innovation with this whole generative AI thing has been faster than we've ever seen before. You know, we're we're seeing lots of new startups that are that are assembling these Lego blocks in innovative ways to create solutions for all of you. 
so it's you know I my my the perspective that I would try to enforce reinforce with with an investment audience is if you it you know I would encourage you to to really try and learn a, a little bit about cloud um, you know to Matt's point it's you don't have to be very technical to understand the strategic importance of this because it's it's not just infrastructure it, you know the the world where when you wanted to do something with a system and IT came back to you and said it's going to take 2 years and cost 50 million bucks that's not the cloud allows them to come back to you and say yeah we can spin up an mvp of that in a couple of weeks and the cost is entirely variable and so you can change the way you work you know extremely quickly i yeah uh, yeah i would like to add one point like as emmy mentioned by right, like uh, uh, cloud is a lego pieces there so, for example, like before the cloud, so it's a data center world there. So let's say, for example, if you need to uh, install or any software or any AI models or like train the models, we need to install like many uh, applications into the data center and we need to ask to the uh, network person to let them make it more secure and make it connectivity with different like uh, sources and uh, softwares there. But like once the cloud has been uh, there, so we can like... Uh, directly install or uh, create a, like a managed service uh, and we can also create a, like infrastructure as a code that means like uh, for example if you need to create a seismic or, or open ai or azure any services there we can we can all uh, create a pipeline using the infrastructure as a code uh, we can also check the security perspective and we can also predict the cost actually before before actually implementing into the cloud so those part are like part of the infrastructure as a code. And uh, so let's say, for example, if you need uh, this model to run for just like eight hours a day, then you can just spin up this uh, entire infrastructure into just for the eight hours and make it down after business hours. So you don't like, you know, pay any cost for that. So this is like completely pay as you go. So that means like you can also uh, saving a lot of cost based on those uh, infrastructure as a code and uh, in the cloud native tools there. 